Hello everyone, this is Dr. M and welcome to my YouTube channel, My Tooth Study. I'm a trained oral and maxillofacial surgeon and I'm here to help you out with the difficult concepts of dentistry so that you can apply those concepts and clear your dental board exams as well as will help you out to apply these concepts in your clinical practice as well. As you all know, we have already started with the topic of orthodontics and today we'll be discussing about the mechanical principles in the tooth movement. But before we start the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel and also click on the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever I update or upload another video. So let's get started. The biological reactions to the force system results in orthodontic tooth movement. Basically, the physical laws of statics are applied to explain the force systems developed by the orthodontic appliances. The biologic reaction to force and systems developed by the orthodontic appliances. The biological reactions to these force systems eventually result in their moment. Now, there are certain features due to which these forces or these tooth movements happen. The first one is the force. Now, forces are the vectors in half direction and magnitude. For example, a force directed measly moves a tooth easily. Then, a force can act anywhere along the line of action. A pulling force is same as that of a pushing force. Now, the point of force application also influences the tooth movement. A force acting to the center of resistance of a tooth can cause pure translation of a tooth in direction of the force. As you can see here in this image, now the white circles indicate the center of the resistance and at the starting of the tooth position and the shaded circle shows the center of the resistance moved in the direction of the force which is applied for every tooth. A force to the center of resistance causes all the points of the tooth to move the same amount in the same direction. This type of movement is called as a translation or the bodily movement. A pure translation is movement of all points of the tooth in the same direction, in the same amount, and there is no rotation. For a free body floating in space, the center of the resistance is generally coincident with the center of mass or the gravity. For a tooth, the location of center of resistance depends on the size and shape of the tooth and the quality and the level of supporting structures, that is the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone. In a healthy tooth, the center of resistance is presumed to be about one half the distance of the alveolar crest to the root apex. This is approximately 10 mm from where an orthodontic bracket would be located on the crown of the tooth. The center of the resistance is more apical for a periodontally compromised tooth with a loss of attachment. So that is why the placement of the bracket is very important and its correlation to that of the center of resistance and the center of the rotation is also very important. Now coming on to the moment. Now a moment is defined as a tendency to rotate and may also refer to rotation, chipping, or a torque in the orthodontics. The order of a tooth movement in the rotation can be described as a liver of first order, a liver of second order, and the liver of third order. <clears throat> Where the liver of first order of the rotation is the occlusal view, the order of the second order is known as the chipping, which is that of the occlusal view, and that of the third order is basically the torquing. A force which is when applied at a bracket that does not act through the center of the resistance causes the rotation of a tooth. This tendency to rotate is measured in moments and it is called as a moment of force which we already discussed. Now the magnitude of the moment that is known as the MF described here is actually measured as a magnitude of force times the perpendicular distance from the line of the force to the resistance, that is MF is equal to F into D, as you can see here. And all the first, second, and third orders are described here. 
if a force is applied at a point other than the center of resistance in addition to moving the center of resistance in the direction of the force, a moment is created. The how moment is created, which is clearly conceptualized here. A rotational moment caused by force not acting to the center of resistance is best visualized by the simultaneous process of tools translation. In first image, moves the center of resistance in the direction of the force and the two. In B, it is the around the center of the resistance. And in the C images, you can see here, these are the combination of translation and the resistance, which we already discussed. Now, the center of rotation is the mathematical point about which the truth appears to be rotated. When increasing the magnitude of the force or applying the same force even farther from the center of resistance increases its tendency for rotation. The magnitude of a moment is equal to that of the magnitude of force applied at the distance as we saw in the image. Now, then coming on to the couples. A couple is to equal and opposite non collinear forces. The couple applied to a tooth produces a pure rotation without a translation. The tooth rotates about its center of resistance regardless of a point of application. The magnitude of the moment created by a couple depends on the force magnitude and the distance between the forces applied. Now these couples are usually applied by engaging a wire in the edgewise bracket slot as we use the ligature wires. Coming on to the equivalent force system. Now determining how a tooth will move can be calculated basically by expressing what a tooth will feel at the center of the resistance secondary to a force applied at the bracket. For example, a force at the bracket would cause the tooth to feel a force at the center of resistance plus to its tendency to rotate or tip or turn. Now the types of tooth movements, as you can see here, there are many types of movements. First is the pure rotation. When a couple is applied to a tooth, it rotates about its center of resistance. Then the center of rotation is at the center of resistance. Now then is the uncontrolled tipping. When a force is applied at the bracket, just this one, the center of resistance moves in the direction of force, the tooth crown tips in a direction whereas the apex moves in the opposing direction. The center of rotation is applicable to the center of resistance in this case. And this easiest and the fastest tooth movement which can be accomplished, but it is often the least desirable one. Then coming on to the control tipping. Now over here, a force is applied at the bracket. A small couple is also placed in the partial to partially negate the tipping of the crown force by caused by a force. The center of rotation is at the root apex. Now, this is a slightly more difficult type of the tooth moment. Then is the pure translational moment, or known as the bodily moment. A force is applied at the brackets, and a large couple is also applied to exactly negate the tipping. The center of the rotation is so far apical to the tooth at the infinity that the tooth translates without any tipping moment, which is this one. Then this is a difficult and a slow type of tooth movement. Then is the root moment or the pure root movement, as you can see here, when you just want the moment of the tooth. A force is applied at the bracket, or even a larger couple is applied at to more than the negating the tipping of the crown caused by the force. Only the root moves in the direction. Now the center of rotation at this is generally the crown of the tooth. Now, this is most difficult and the slowest type of rotation. Then coming on to the extrusion or that of the extrusion, which you can already see here. Then coming on to the static equilibrium. Now, the static equilibrium, all the orthodontic appliances obey generally the Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. For each appliance, the sum of the forces and the sum of the moment acting on it sums to zero. It is impossible to design an appliance that defies this. For example, of this type of appliances are, for example, an equal and opposite force, an elastic band or a coil can be stretched between the two brackets to produce equal and opposing forces. 
one couple of lines inserted into a bracketed one then entitled a point at the other end. A couple is produced only at the engaged end. Equal and opposing forces in the direction opposite to the couple at the engaged end are produced at the two attachment sites. Then coming on to the sum of the forces, that is the equal and the opposing reactions. The sum of these equal and opposing reactions generally sum up to the sum of the moments, which comes out to be zero. Then there's a two couple of lines. In this, uh, these appliances inserted into a bracket at both the ends. Now both a couple and a force are produced. And the magnitude of each couple is the largest at the end closer to the bend in the wire. Then, <coughs> coming on to the anchorage, which is defined as the resistance to that of the moment. Because of the forces applied to teeth are distributed along the root surface to activate the cells in the PDN, the anchorage value of a tooth is roughly equivalent to the root surface area. Then coming on to the reciprocal tooth moments. Now, basically the anchorage has four types, the reciprocal tooth moment, the reinforced anchorage, the stationary, the cortical, and the implants for the anchorage. The reciprocal tooth moment is when the two equal anchorage value teeth or groups of teeth are moved against each other and move the same amount towards each other. The reinforced anchorage is basically adding additional teeth to the units to redistribute the forces over a greater area and slowing the moment of the anchorage. Another method of reinforcing the anchorage would be extra only forces. For example, you can even use a head pair or even inter arch elastics. The stationary anchorage, also known as the term stationary, which is although not an accurate term, the teeth meant to be the anchor are activated to undergo difficult slow moments, such as the bodily moments, which is also known as the translation moments, or that of the root moments that will redistribute forces disposed over all large area, whereas the reactive unit undergoes tipping, which occurs faster and more easily as a result of concentrated forces. Now, the cortical anchorage. Anchor teeth roots are moved into the cortical bone, which resolves more slowly than the medullary bone. This is a controversial concept because the root resorption would be likely to be increased. Implants, including the palatine implants, mini screws, and temporary anchorage devices, bone plates, can serve as absolute anchorage for holding a, or a moving tooth. The staple implant does not move because it has no PDL. As you know, was a brief video about this very important topic. If you want to have the detailed notes of my lecture, then you can click on the description box and check out the Google form where you can fill out that Google form. From there, we would provide you a PayPal link. After the payment, you will get my full detailed notes. Also shortly, I'll be coming up with the series of 100 questions from each of these subjects, which would be style according to the INBD so that it can help you out preparing for your dental board exams. That's all for today's lecture. I hope you like the video, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget to click on the bell icon so that you get an update whenever I upload another video. That's all for today. Thank you.